Welcome to the A Global IT Solution podcast. Here you will get to hear audio describing the information that is shared in our latest blogs and today's topic is what's new in Flutter 3. So, here we begin. Flutter revealed support for Windows only 3 months ago and as part of Google IO, it launched Flutter 3 with solid Mac OS and Linux compatibility. From Flutter 2.0 to Flutter 3.0 in this version update. This moves Flutter from a mobile app development framework to a cross-platform framework. Originally intended to revolutionize app development, additional framework features, integration support, widgets, feature-rich library packages, speed optimization approaches, and other improvements have been made over time. Many developers began to use Flutter as the product evolved, and there are now over 500,000 Flutter-based apps. According to Statista, Flutter has been utilized by 42% of developers. This demonstrates that Flutter has grown in popularity as a cross-platform UI toolkit for developing natively built apps. So without further ado, let's get started with Flutter 3. With Flutter 3, Google has yet again produced a masterpiece. With Flutter, you can design open, attractive, productive, and personalized UI across six platforms with a single code base. allowing developers to work more efficiently and bring their ideas to life more than just drawing pixels is required to add support it also includes several complexities new inputs interaction models and builds that facilitate accessibility platform specific integration and internationalization flutter 3 also supports iterative live coding which includes hot reloading and the ability to run multiple copies of the application at once A major purpose of Flutter 3 is to allow you the freedom to use the underlying operating system to its full potential while sharing as much UI and logic as you like. So, here are the following changes. The first new feature of Flutter 3.0 is that it supports six platforms with a single code base. With this stable Mac OS and Linux release, Flutter 3 is compatible with six different platforms: iOS, Android, mobile and desktop browser, Windows, Mac OS and Linux. With the support for ARM and Intel, Mac OS supports both Apple Silicon and Intel. The Flutter engine and Dart toolchain convert your release code to ARM or Intel machine instructions for both desktop and mobile compilation. For the web, it's compiled to highly efficient JavaScript that adheres to the newest web standards, WebGL. Flutter Material 3 compatibility is the second feature that we will discuss. Google's in-house concept for the next edition of Material Design. Material 3 elements like dynamic color, an improved color system and typography, improvements to several components, and unique visual effects introduced in Android 12, such as a touch-sensitive ripple design and a stretch over scroll effect, are all supported by Flutter 3. The Flutter team has created a cross-platform design that allows you to turn your original ideas into a beautiful, dynamic, and strong solution. Dart, an elevated, adaptable language for multi-platform programming, powers Flutter. New features that decrease boilerplate and enhance enumeration, loose restrictions around named arguments, order your positional and named argument, and most importantly, allow the use of super parameter are all part of this cycle's Dart upgrade. The third feature that Flutter 3 has to offer is supports Flutter Fire. A UI framework is only one part of the riddle where app development is concerned. To help you design, distribute, and manage your apps, you'll need a full set of tools, including authorization, data storage, cloud functionality, and device testing. Sentry, AppRite, and AWS Amplify are just a few of the services that empower Flutter. Flutter Firebase integration has been announced by the Flutter team, providing a fully supported core portion of the Firebase service. In Flutter 3, there is an UPD, 8 in Firebase also. The Flutter team has been working with Firebase to make Flutter the first class integration for the last few years. It includes better documentation and new widgets like Flutterify UI, which powers developers with reusable UI for profile screens and UI. With this update, this integration fully supports the core functions of Firebase. The source code and documentation are moved to the main repo A7 site of Firebase. The fourth new feature of Flutter 3.0 is updates in Firebase Crashlytics. With the help of the Flutter Crashlytics plugin, 
You may track catastrophic mistakes in real time, and you'll have access to the same set of tools that other iOS and Android developers use. Important metrics and alerts are used to keep track of your app's reliability. The Crashlytics analysis workflow has been modified to enhance Flutter crash clustering, making it easier to evaluate, identify, and resolve issues. Finally, the update has improved the plugin setup procedure so that getting started with Crashlytics from your Dart code takes a few clicks. Support for the system menu bar in macOS and cascading menus is the fifth new feature of Flutter 3.0. Modern input enabling platform specific integration and interactive models for compilation to give support, accessibility, and internationalization are among some of the new Flutter 3 features. The update's goal is to provide more freedom in how the operating system is used and provide the best user interface and logic possible. Flutter's most recent additions focus on platform compatibility in addition to pixel rendering. The sixth feature is International Text Input on all desktop platform improved text inputs are among the new features in Flutter 3.0. Korean, Japanese, and Chinese are among the languages that employ the current releases text input method editor, IME. All three desktop platforms now support these three languages in their entirety. Third-party input techniques like Google Japanese Input and Sago are also supported. Flutter Games Toolkit stands at the seventh position in the list of Flutter 3.0 feature. Around Flutter, there was a burgeoning gaming scene. Even though Flutter was not created for a high-intensity 3D game, it is being used by gaming giants such as PUBG for non-gaming UI. Flutter's accelerated graphics support has become popular with the gaming community. It also supports Flame and other open-source gaming engines. Flutter has introduced the following features in this I.O. Casual Games Toolkit. This toolkit includes starting kit templates and cloud service best practices. The Flutter team has designed a fun pinball game using Flutter and Firebase to demonstrate adaptability. This pinball game has a unique table based on four of Google's favorite mascots, Firebase's Sparky, Flutter's Dash, the Android Robot, and the Chrome Dinosaur. Now let's have a look at the updates to the mobile platform. The first update is support for the foldable phone. Thanks to Microsoft's contribution, Flutter 3 now includes support for foldable mobile devices. This enables developers to build a vibrant, eye-catching, and robust interface on foldable devices by adding new features and widgets. The variable refresh rate on iOS devices is the second updates to the mobile platform on iOS devices with a promotion display, Flutter now enables variable refresh rates. Flutter apps can now draw at refresh rates up to 120Hz on these devices, up from 60Hz before, this provides a more fluid experience during quick motions like scrolling. The third update is iOS release simplified another feature of Flutter 3.0 is a streamlined approach to iOS delivery. The Flutter Build IPA command now has additional options in this latest release. Build the Xcode archive and app bundle using the Flutter Build IPA command when you distribute the app to test flight or the App Store. Export method development, export method ad hoc, and export method enterprise are all options. Once you've finished building the bundle, you may submit it to Apple using the Apple Transport macOS program or XC Runal tool on the command line. After uploading, you may distribute your app on the App Store or test flight. You don't need to enter Xcode to release your app once you've set up your basic Xcode project parameters, such as the display name and app icon. Gradle version support has occupied the fourth position in the updates list. You may have noticed that when you use the Flutter tool to build a new project, the resulting files now use the newest version of Android Gradle and Gradle plugins. It is recommended to manually upgrade the versions of existing projects to 7.4 for using Gradle and 7.1.2 for using the Android Gradle plugin. As declared, support for 32-bit iOS devices and iOS versions 9 and 10 will be phased off, beginning with the stable release of 2.10 in February 2022. The iPhone 5, iPhone 4S, and iPhone 5C and the second to fourth generation iPad devices will be affected by this change. Flutter 3 is the most recent stable version that works with these iOS versions and devices. 
So far we have discussed about the mobile update of Flutter 3. Now let's discuss the update to the web. The first update is decoding image. With the Flutter 3 updates, the image decoder API is automatically detected and used in a browser that supports it. This API controls the loading of the Flutter engine, framework and content. This API lets you run Flutter in headless mode. This API is supported in 99% of Chromium-based devices and can sooner be seen on the other browser. With the support of the browser's built-in image codex, the new API decodes pictures asynchronously of the main thread. This doubles the speed of picture decoding and never interrupts the main thread, eliminating any junk caused by images earlier. The second update for web is new lifecycle API. The updated lifespan API for Flutter web apps lets you handle your Flutter app's bootstrapping process without needing to serve an HTML page, so it helps Lighthouse analyze your app's performance. This is true in a variety of situations, including a splash screen, a loading indicators, before the Flutter app, and plain HTML interactive landing page is displayed. The last update for web is deprecating Windows 7 8. With the release of Flutter 3, the recommended Windows version for development is increased to Windows 10. This doesn't mean that the support for the older version is stopped, but as these versions are not supported by Microsoft anymore, they will have limited support. Although these versions will receive the best effort support, it is recommended to upgrade to Flutter 3.0. Talking about the updates in Flutter and Dart development tool, total 4 tooling updates has been made. They are, Lint package update is the first tooling update. The V2.0 sets of Lint are enabled by default in Flutter 3 apps created using Flutter Create. Current apps, bundles, and extensions are urged to upgrade to V2.0 to follow the most up-to-date Flutter best practices using the command Flutter pub upgrade major versions Flutter underscore Lints. The newly added Lint V2 comes with automatic fixes. So, after updating your app's pubspec.yaml file to the newest package version, you can run Dart fix, apply to correct most Lint warnings automatically. Apps, packages, and plugins that don't yet use package. Flutter lints can migrate using the migration guide. The second tooling update is the performance optimization in basic circumstances, opacity animations perform well. The save layer technique used to trigger opacity is ignored when an opacity widget includes only one drawing primitive. In a benchmark created to measure the benefits of this strategy, the rasterization time for this situation is increased by order of magnitude. Impella is standing at the third position on iOS and other platforms, the Flutter team has been tackling early onset junk. On iOS, the most recent Flutter 3 version includes a sneak peek at Impeller, an experimental rendering backend. Impeller precompiles a smaller, easier set of shaders during engine build time, so they don't compile while the application runs. This has been a prime source of junk in Flutter. The Impeller is currently in the initial stages of development and is not ready for deployment. We haven't incorporated all of Flutter's capabilities yet. But we're happy enough with the quality zero and efficiency of the Flutter, Gallery app to share our efforts. Android Inline adds as the fourth and last tooling update. You can witness improved efficiency in user important interactions like scrolling and transitions when using the command Google Mobile Ads package. Flutter can now asynchronously create Android views, often known as platform views. This eliminate the requirement for the Flutter raster thread to wait for the Android view to draw before proceeding. Rather, the Flutter engine uses an open GL texture that it controls to display the view on the screen. Apart from these web and mobile updates, let's take a look at some of the other Flutter 3 ecosystem updates. The first ecosystem updates is theme extensions. Using theme extensions, you can now add anything to the material library's theme data. You can connect to theme data. Extensions instead of extending theme data and re-implementing copy with LERP and other functions. You may also supply theme extensions if you're a package developer. The second and last Flutter 3 ecosystem updates is personalized ads. Flutter team the importance of obtaining consent for customized adverts and complying with Apple's app tracking transparency at regulations. To meet these needs, Google provides the user messaging platform SDK, which replaces the prior open-source consent SDK. 
The UMPSDK will be supported in the next edition of the GMESDK for Flutter, allowing publishers to get user consent. As Flutter improves and grows, the changes are kept to a minimum. With the release of Flutter 3 following are some of the important changes. Deprecated API removed after v2.10, page transitions replaced by Zoom page transitions builder, migrate use delete button tooltip to delete button tooltip message of chips. If you're using any of these APIs, refer to the official migration guide on Flutter Dev. So this was all about what's new in a Flutter. Hope you're excited to use these dynamic features to create a tailored and robust Flutter application. Thanks for listening. For more such informative content keep following our podcast.